Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brainbean here again. You know, on this channel, I do a lot of reviews of expensive keyboards or expensive mice, but I realized that not everybody's looking to spend an arm and a leg on a new peripheral setup. So I went on Amazon and I found every keyboard and mouse bundle around 50 bucks that I could, ordered them all, and in this video, we are gonna find out what's the best 50 bucks you can spend if you're looking for a new keyboard and mouse. So with that, let's get started. So taking a look at the bundles making an appearance in this roundup, we've got a $50 setup from Red Dragon, who's been a big player in the budget-friendly space for a while. And very similar to them, we've got Habit as well here with another $50 setup. And then we've also got a $55 setup from eConnect that also comes with the mouse pad. So I wanna start this off by looking at the mice first. Now, as you can see, they all have their own distinct shape to them, which is pretty interesting. Starting with the Red Dragon mouse, this is a seven button mouse, although two of those buttons are gonna be for RGB and the second is for DPI. Um, we've got the pretty standard right-handed configuration here with the two thumb buttons on the side for mouse four and five. We've got mouse one and two here, and then we have a clickable scroll wheel. The shape is basically like an old school right-handed Ergo mouse. It's not nearly as streamlined as more of the current mice are right now. So it's got these big grooves for the ring finger and pinky finger that really stick out and make the mouse feel bulky. And for somebody with pretty large hands, if I were to palm this thing, it actually feels pretty comfortable. I was pretty surprised by that. Looking at the measurements, it's 128 millimeters long and it's 77 millimeters wide going all the way up to 80 millimeters at its widest point and it's 42 millimeters tall. Looking at the build quality of Red Dragon's mouse, there's no frame creak to it. Uh, feels pretty solid in the hands, all things considered. The grips though are not rubber or anything like that. There's gonna be a more lightly textured plastic grip to it, which isn't too bad. The thumb buttons are pretty responsive, surprisingly. Got a, a nice light click to them. The scroll wheel though on this mouse is incredibly light. There's not a lot of tactility there and the grip on it feels pretty decent. As you can see, it's a fairly well RGB'd mouse. They've got the button here on the back to change through the different profiles. You've got the Red Dragon logo in the grip. You've also got this kind of little light bar at the very back of the mouse. And then you've got the two strips that run along the sides and even under the, the mouse one and two buttons as well, you've got a bit of RGB poking out there too. So it looks pretty good in terms of all the different lighting modes that you can cycle through. Um, overall, I'd say visually, it's kind of a more aggressive e gamery looking mouse, but the feel isn't too bad. DPI settings are 800, 1200, 1600, 2400, and 7200. And in terms of testing and playing with the mouse, I didn't have any issues with the sensor not picking up or skipping or anything like that. The liftoff distance could get a little bit wonky, but other than that, considering the price, I thought it performed just fine. And the Red Dragon mouse is a little bit on the heavy side at 113 grams, but surprisingly overall, it's pretty comfortable. Now, it's not that great for fast, flicky FPS style gameplay, but it's definitely a competent budget mouse. Looking at the mouse from Habit, this one's got a little bit more of a flatter linear shape to it, kind of something like a Razor Viper or Ducky Feather or something like that. Um, it's not an, an ambi mouse, but it does kind of feel like it kind of should be one. It just doesn't have the buttons on the right side of the mouse. It's a little bit lighter than Red Dragon's mouse coming in at 98 grams, so it's still not a super lightweight mouse. But in terms of being able to palm this thing, it's still a little bit on the larger side, so you could palm it. You could also do like a claw grip or a fingertip grip. I do think it lends itself well to a lot of different styles. So as kind of a starter mouse, I think it's not too bad. And the dimensions on Habit's mouse are 128 millimeters long, 66 millimeters wide, and 40 millimeters tall. And it's a little bit lighter than Red Dragon's coming in at 98 grams. And looking at overall build quality for Habit, it's a pretty solid feeling mouse. It's very similar to Red Dragon's. There's not any like frame creak or bending or groaning or anything like that. The matte texture on the finish looks nice. And because this does come in white and black, I think overall it's got a nice kind of gray uh, in white aesthetic. Very similar to the Red Dragon mouse, this is also a seven button mouse. And behind the scroll wheel in almost the same configuration as Red Dragon's, we've got the DPI button with six DPI modes, 800, 1600, 2400, 3200, 4000, and 4800. I like the feeling of the grips on this mouse. They are made entirely out of plastic, but they have these real small grooves that kind of run down the length of both sides of the mouse. Give you a little bit of grip without feeling too bumpy or irritating. The scroll wheel on this one is a lot better than Red Dragon's. It's got a little bit more tactility to it. The click also feels a little bit more defined and I like the more bumpy texture to the grip. 
Mouse one and two feel nice, nice and responsive, not a lot of wobble to the actual buttons there. The side buttons aren't my favorite for mouse four and five, although the placement on them is pretty good overall. I also noticed that the cable on Habit's mouse is a lot more flexible than both Econex and Red Dragons. Red Dragons especially is very rigid. I mean, I tried working this thing out, even in some of the B-roll, I wasn't able to get it to sit down because it was just so rigid, even after working out that cable for a while to try to get it to work. You do have seven different RGB modes on this mouse by clicking the, deep, the RGB button. You got the little Habit text logo in the grip and you've got some underglow that goes all the way around the mouse on the back and the sides. And then you've also got the RGB in the scroll wheel. And I do think the lighting on Habit's mouse is also a little bit more vibrant than on Red Dragons. And in testing the mouse from Habit, I found that it was a lot easier to just pick up and use than the one from Red Dragon. It certainly feels a lot more nimble and less cumbersome. Sensor tracks just fine. It performed exactly the same as Red Dragons without any issues where you know it's losing tracking or stuttering or anything weird like that. And in fact, on this one, if you told me that this mouse cost 30 or 40 bucks even, I probably would believe you because the quality on it is far surpassing my expectations. And lastly, we have the mouse from eConnect. Now this is the one that I was most excited to look at because it's advertised as being a 67 gram mouse and it is got this sort of lightweight honeycomb design to it. And so I was like, man, that, that seems pretty decent. The dimensions on eConnect's mouse are 128.5 millimeters long, 67 millimeters wide and 38 millimeters tall. It's in four different colorways, which is cool. And the overall feel of the shape of the mouse is surprisingly very comfortable. I mean, if this was in a little bit more premium package, I would very much like the feel of this shell. But unfortunately, that's kind of where the good stuff on this mouse ends. Now on my scale, when I weighed it, we were more like 80 grams instead of 67. Not super surprised by that, which is still lighter than the other two, but still we're not really the super lightweight ergo that this is kind of advertised as. And looking at overall build quality for the eConnect mouse, it doesn't flex or anything like that, but it does feel noticeably cheaper than the other two. Mouse one and two clicks feel pretty decent, not the best, but they're not as bad as I was expecting. The scroll wheel has almost no tactility to it, not the greatest. It's also recessed down pretty low between the two buttons, making it difficult to hit on the fly. And mouse four and five on the side are some of the most trash feeling mouse buttons that I have ever tried. In fact, trying to reach all the way up to hit the front one is almost impossible. It just doesn't click in well. It's got a ton of pre-travel before it activates. It just doesn't feel great. DPI settings on this, same DPI settings as Habits. And you also have some RGB modes here that you can click through. It's got seven different modes that all kind of look pretty okay. Nothing as fancy in terms of smoothness or animations that the other two mice have. And if you look here on where the light bar wraps around the underside, you can see all the individual LEDs and how they don't diffuse super well, which isn't my favorite. Got a little bit of light leaking in behind the scroll wheel. And then we've got this Zhao Lang uh, logo under the honeycomb, which really doesn't mean a whole lot to me. And the overall experience in testing this really wasn't all that great. The sensor was fine, pretty much the same as the others, but everything else about it, the mouse buttons don't feel great. Mouse four and five have a ton of pre-travel and are very difficult to reach naturally. And even though the feel and the shell on the mouse actually feels really nice in the hands, it just isn't a mouse that I'm gonna recommend. And just so you guys can hear how the switches on the mice sound, here is a quick sound test. So overall, considering all the different factors, I think Habit has the better mouse out of the three. The cable's a lot more flexible, so it's gonna give you a little bit more free feeling. It's not as heavy as Red Dragon's is, and I think the weight is pretty acceptable for the price. The mouse switches feel pretty decent, thumb buttons all activate pretty well, and the scroll wheel has a nice tactility to it, and the overall RGB and animations, everything there, considering how much this costs, I'm pretty impressed with it.
So starting with the keyboard from Red Dragon. Now this is an 87 key, 10 keyless keyboard. And overall construction on it feels pretty good. It's a metal top plate that's wrapped in an ABS plastic case. The sidewalls on the case are a little bit weird to me as they come up about a centimeter higher than the top plate does. Which normally if you had a plastic case wrapped around the top plate, it would be kind of all over the whole thing. So it would go over the arrow cluster and kind of fill in all the void space. But on this one, it just kind of makes a lip that comes up. And so everything else is recessed down into it, which almost looks like, you know, you could spill a drink into it and it would hold all of it for you or something. It's a little bit weird. Looking at the keyboard though, overall visually, it's pretty clean looking for a, a 10 keyless board. You've got the little red, red dragon logo here just above the arrow cluster where you've got your two uh, LED indicators as well. Looking at the keycaps, these are ABS keycaps, and the font on them is very similar to Corsair's older font, so it's a bigger, bolder, blockier font, which does a really good job at showing off the RGB lighting and kind of accentuating a little bit. This keyboard does have nine different RGB preset modes that you control entirely on the keyboard, and it also does have multimedia control by way of the function key as well. And overall, lighting animations on this look pretty good, although they're not super bright and vibrant and maybe a little bit on the kind of lower contrasty side. The switches on this guy are Red Dragon's branded blue switches. And the overall feel on them is pretty much what you would expect for a budget blue switch. One thing I do like though, is that they have the extended sidewalls that come up on the switch stem. So they're not quite as wobbly, which is a nice added touch. The click could be a little bit snappier, but again, considering the price point, I don't think they're that bad. I was pretty impressed to see that the plate mounted cherry style stabilizers are lubed. So you do get a pretty decent stabilizer experience on these. And you'll hear that on the sound test here. Once we've taken a look at all three, we'll do a back-to-back -back sound test of all three keyboards. On the underside, you've got a set of extendable rubberized legs and a couple of smaller uh, rubberized pads. And the cable is a non-removable, simple rubber cable. And really looking at the total package, I mean, this is kind of what I would expect for a budget, you know, let's say if the mouse is worth 10 to 15, then this is a 35 to $40 mechanical RGB keyboard. Not a ton of RGB options, but the overall performance isn't, you know, completely terrible. And, uh, you know, overall I'd say I'm, I'm pretty much what I would expect on this guy here. Now looking at the keyboard from eConnect, this one's available in four different colorways. We've got the white variation here. And looking at the casing, I mean, this is a nice compact 65% keyboard. The case feels surprisingly very solid and aesthetically it looks pretty darn good. I mean, it's got a very similar look to a lot of other 65% keyboards out there that cost a lot more money. But unfortunately, like the mouse with eConnect, the visuals is pretty much where the positives end on this guy. The first thing I wanna talk about is just Again, with the aesthetics, these are also double shot ABS keycaps. And the font is this very bold, aggressive, gamery looking font, which does a decent job at really showing off the lighting, but it's just visually not that great to look at. It's got 18 different lighting zones, which is a plus. There's a lot of different options there with some pretty decent animations. But unfortunately, the switches under the keycap are about as generic, no name brand blue switches as you can get. They're kind of crunchy feeling. They're just not very, nice and light and clicky like they should be. And the stabilizers are the most horrific stabilizers that I have ever tried. I mean, just listen to the space bar and we're gonna do a sound test, but just listen to this. I mean, it is terrible. Really, really, really bad on the stabilizers. I do like though that it has a removable USB-C cable, which is nice. You could always throw a cable that's worth more than the entire keyboard on there if you wanted to make it look cool. We've got some rubberized extendable legs here, although they feel like they're gonna fall off when you lift them up, which is kind of a bummer. And really, again, like the mouse, it looked good coming out of the gate and ultimately just falls flat on its face. And lastly, we're gonna take a look at the keyboard from Habit. Again, this one, like the eConnect, is a 65% keyboard, and it's got a really nice, solid feeling case to it. It's heavier than the one from eConnect, and it also has less flex to it. I do like that you can get it in either black or white, which is a big plus. It also has a removable USB-C cable on the back, and that is because this keyboard is also wireless, which is something that the other two options don't have, and at this price point, I'm kind of surprised to see that, honestly. It does only have about a 10 hour battery though. So for continuous use, 10 hours or so, it does uh, have power save modes as well. So if you were to use it off and on, they say you could get about 30 days worth out of it. But for me, I feel like you gotta be barely using it to get that full 30 days. But either way, at this price point, having wireless capability, I think is a big plus. 
I do want to point out that the RGB in the Habit keyboard actually isn't true RGB. It's actually just flocked out areas of colors in the keyboard, but there's a bunch of different animations that do a really good job at faking RGB, if that makes sense, but still worth pointing out. And when you look at the ABS keycaps on this one as well, it has the most clean, simple font out of the two keyboards. And so when you pair the nicer animations with the font on it also is kind of a nice plus there as well. But what ultimately really sold this keyboard as being the best out of the three for me are the stabilizers and the switches. Now, admittedly, the switches aren't the best. They're Juano Brown switches, which don't have a whole lot of tactility to them. They're pretty light even lighter tactile feeling than Cherry MX Browns. So it's kind of almost like a chunky linear switch if you look at it that way. But when you combine it with the stabilizers at this price point, it is a real winner. And I'm gonna again do the sound test, but I mean, just listen to that. No rattle, actually pretty damn nice feeling stabilizers. They do come pre-factory lubed like the ones from Red Dragon. And these switches do have a little bit of wobble to them, but in the grand scheme of things, when you consider that again, this is probably a 30 or $40 keyboard, performs quite well. So to summarize it all up, the Habit Bundle for me is the clear winner. The mouse is leaps and bounds ahead of the other two, just in terms of overall comfort and feel. I think it's gonna accommodate most different hand sizes better than the other two will. The cable feels a lot better and the switches and just everything about it just feels a little bit more premium than the other two. The keyboard again is about the same story. I love that the stabilizers feel really nice. The switches could be better and it's only available in brown switches, but I think when you compare it to the other offerings, it's probably the better way to go again to appeal to the most widest audience for the best experience. And then secondly, we have the offerings from Red Dragon, which again, they're not terrible for 50 bucks. If you like a more right-handed design or a larger, heavier mouse, you might like this option better. You also get a 10 key variation. And if you want clicky switches, this is gonna be your only option because honestly, I wouldn't recommend going anywhere near the eConnect bundle. It's just fails in so many different aspects that just, for me, are one of those things that you're gonna get it and you're not gonna be satisfied with it. The fact that it comes with a mouse pad for me is a non-issue because it's really a pretty crappy mouse pad anyways. So honestly, I would stay away from the eConnect bundle and look more towards the Red Dragon or the one from Habit. But the one from Habit really surprised me and would be the one that I would recommend the most. One little issue I do wanna point out with the Habit bundle though is for some reason mine shipped with this weird brown oil kind of smudged over the casing. I was able to remove it with just like an alcohol pad, but if I were you and I got it like that, I would send it back and get a different one. So just keep that in mind. I'm sure it was probably some weird factory thing, but I still wanna point it out to you guys. Well, that's it for the comparison, guys. Let me know what you think about doing these more budget-friendly roundups. This is something I definitely want to do more of in the future. Let me know in those comments down below what you think about these three bundles. And of course, you can follow me over on Twitter at BrainBeanGaming. But as always, guys, stay safe out there, take care of each other, and I will see you in the next one.